Praise the Lord. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I was speaking all last week about an amazing topic, and the Holy Spirit just did the whole thing. I didn't do it. And uh, it was really amazing how the Lord just began to speak. Uh, and, and it became a woven together series, really. And I didn't, I didn't plan that. You know, some people like, I got to have my series now. I'm going to plan it out, what I'm going to speak on for four or five days. I didn't do it. The Holy Spirit did the whole thing. Very supernatural to God be the glory. It's more supernatural that way. I have an absolutely astoundingly amazing supernatural ministry. When you plan it and write it out and teach it and it's good stuff, that's always good. But when you uh, <laughs> don't plan it and it just comes out and it becomes a whole theme of a message that you know that came from heaven. Did you get that point? I said it came from heaven. This is what the church needs more than anything. People need to hear from God. Direct connection. That was one of the, uh, the days of the conference, I spoke about the calling of God and walking in a direct connection. That scares some preachers because they think, oh, am I going to be out of the equation now? And then people don't need me to lay hands on them and pray for them and they give me money or whatever. <laughs> I think God has trillions of dollars available to the one who's sold out to him. So why would we think that somebody has something for us, something so little, that we have to play games with manipulation and whatever? And then some people have something going, and they're so stingy, they're so tricky, they're like con men. You know, I don't see uh, the, the, the character of God in them. And I've seen too many people like that. So... I want to tell you where you'll always do well, the point I'm making here, where you, <laughs> where you will always do well is with a direct connection with God. Say a big amen. A direct connection with the one who'll never lead you wrong. He'll never do you wrong. He'll never do you dirty. He'll never mess you up in any way. I love God for his, his great attributes. Look at the creation he made. Look at the way he made us. Look at the way he did everything. It's so absolutely amazing. I mean, it's beyond description. So in this session, for a few moments, I'm heading to another event with thousands of people waiting for us there in a little while. So I'm going to do this as quick as I can. Uh... And I think I'll be able to do it because it's just some certain things I want to say and that's it. I don't want to go long and embellish a lot of, tell a lot of testimonies and stories. I want to just give point by point several things that the Lord spoke to me uh, a while ago. I was wondering, what is on your mind, Lord? And he spoke to me very clearly. It's amazing. Uh, Father, thank you for your, your voice in me. I'm just amazed at it all. <sighs> how you speak to me. I was in the shower of all places. That's a good place to be as much as you can. I know one evangelist, he's always in the gym and he's always going, you know, doing this stuff. So he says, oh, he takes like three showers a day. I'm like, lucky you, man. You know, you spend half your time. That's good. Let me tell you, I wanted to say this. If you go to the gym, yeah, you got to take a shower. If you go to the spa, yeah, you're going to do that. If you're in the steam room, yeah, you're going to do that. Hydration of water and all these things, supplements and all that. I've talked a lot about that. You have to take care of yourself. I have friends and people that I know that their lives could have been saved if they had done more supplementation, exercise, and taking care of themselves. So uh, it's important to do all that. Bodily exercise profits, the Bible says little, meaning less than the spiritual, but it does profit some. So I want to I wrap this uh, four messages up with a fifth one and put a cap on this. This will become a book, and I'm, I'm reading a script from the Spirit. I saw it all in a vision a while ago. 
while I was in the shower of all places. I just began to meditate. I saw it on a screen in the spirit. I saw it. I'm reading from the script as if there are teleprompters here, like President Trump will be giving a speech. He has two teleprompters he can read. There's a lot of things. There's so much to say. You want to make sure you have all your notes that you cover everything in a speech. So it's just an assistant. But it's like I'm reading off a script. I saw this. uh, And I'm going to say exactly what I heard. Jesus' success was based upon the fact that he did what he saw the Father show him to do. And he said what the Father spoke to him and then told him to say. And then we know Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing except he first reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet. And then it begins to happen. In Ezra 7, 10, the Bible says, Ezra sought to know the law and the ways of God and then to do them, to see how they work, and then teach them to others. A lot of people aren't demonstrating what they work with, what they know. And I think when, you, when you're not uh, practicing what you preach, who cares about that? What is this, some kind of religious game? No. This is life. This is reality. You should preach what you practice. What's real to you is what should come out of you. And when it's a walk with God and you're discovering a lot of things and it's a real adventure, you, it's, your ministry is very, very relevant I was listening to a certain man of God that's had a lot of visions of Jesus in heaven. And he's a, he's a really great guy. Uh, uh, he's becoming a little bit popular. He, he, he really was sharing testimonies of what he, what he experienced. You know, the power of it, from things in the realm of the spirit. This is so powerful. And it's, it's really too rare. A lot of people just reading notes. And, uh, well, I'm reading off the scroll of heaven. And uh, I saw this. This will become a book, and the title, and it will go around the world. Five chapters, one, two, three, four from the conference, and the wrap of this today. I'm going to share about about ten points, and then we're going to get out of here uh, today. So it's entitled "Visionary Leadership." Visionary leadership. I didn't have the title when I walked into the pulpit in the conference, but I had. I was full of revelation and. What things I was going to speak about, and it turned out to be a theme. I said, what is this about? Visionary leadership to take people somewhere, to raise up sons and daughters, to raise up powerful people that they take dominion. And I saw this today, to put it in this volume five here, I saw this. You need to have, number one, God as your mentor, direct, okay? Number two, you need to have a role model who's doing successfully the thing that you want to do. They're doing it already very successfully. You want to model after them. You don't want to listen to anybody that doesn't uh, have any power, have any substance, have any... Uh, you, want to, you want to model yourself after God directly as your mentor. Number two, a role model. Maybe I could put it at that as number three. Because number two needs to be the vision that God gives you. Yeah, that's the highest thing. So let me rearrange the order. One, God himself. Two, the vision he gives you. And three, have a role model of somebody that's doing what you're doing. I've connected with some great apostles over the years and recently with with another great man of God who's become a... We say spiritual father, apostle, pastor, leader. And I I see myself becoming more like him in a lot of ways. His schedule is amazing. He's doing very well. He's very organized. I see myself doing the things he's been doing. And I look at his life yesterday. Yesterday I was with him. And I saw how he set up his whole thing. Uh, it's, It's astounding. The level of organization and precision, timeliness, work, uh, success, thousands of people coming, and it being a whole order and a movement, even that's under his covering. So I thought this is the best thing you could ever have because residual income from all the people, i just talk about money for a minute, all the people that are coming, are under pastors and leaders and bishops, apostles, whatever, that are there, 
and they're with their churches, and some are also with his main church, and all of it is filtering up to him as the apostle, and he's able to build this whole movement with untold, multiplied hundreds of millions and millions and bill even billions. And I thought, this is absolutely brilliant. The thing about it that's so glorious, it's a kingdom order. So you want to have a role model, yes? Now, next thing I saw in this spirit, I'm reading, I'm, it's like I'm reading off the heaven's teleprompter here. I saw these words in front of me in a vision, like I'm watching a screen, a television screen, like a, a, a projector screen. I saw this, I, I said, I, and I was reminded of a principle that I have. I don't like things that don't work, and I don't like people that don't work. And I want to say this, things that are broken, they don't work, or something's not right, it, it's unnerving, very irritating. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> and people that don't work, people that don't work, one or two reasons, they don't have any direction, they need help. Let's love people, they, they need direction, they need a strong voice, they need some direction, they need a leader, okay, maybe they need a leader to lead them somewhere, and then they know what to do, now they'll begin to work more. Some people... Yeah, let me just say, laziness is a real sin, okay? Proverbs says the diligent hand makes rich, and the slack hand makes the want. It says a little sleep, a little slumber, and another, another place in the Proverbs. A little, a little sleep, a little slumber, the folding of the hands, and so shall your poverty come to hunt you down. Poverty will come after you. Poverty is based on the curse in the spirit, which is satanic which is a result of a lot of evils, and even it becomes culturally embedded in a group of people, and they live like that. It's really disgusting, and God never intended it for anybody. And people that are walking in it, they're, they're ignorant, they don't understand it, they're not supposed to be living like that. That's another message, we'll, 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 we'll deal with that more in another day, but I just want to say that. And it's also a lack of direction and a lack of diligence. If you're diligent in something continuously, you will eventually succeed. And the scripture says, the scripture says so clearly, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't quit because you will reap in due season. In other words, the season of your harvest and your blessing is coming. And I, and I, and I, pro I want to prophesy here that it's coming for it speedily if you don't faint. But you had to have done the work. Next point, I'm reading from Heaven's uh, screen here, what I saw in the spirit and the vision a while ago. The Lord, the Lord showed me this. He said, if you, and I want to make this statement, if you don't work your blessed assurance off, you know, blessed assurance has some letters in it that if you put them together, you can understand something. If you don't work your blessed assurance off, you're not going to become successful. You got to work every day. And then sometimes when you start to do something like later on that you wish you would have done before and you're just learning how something works and you're like, you get, you, you feel a lot of pain. I feel like that. I said, wow, I'm just discovering this now. I didn't know that I had to like engage this to see it first and experience it and then to know what to do on the next thing. But if I had never gone to that next step, I wouldn't know the next step to take after that. And how I wish we could have known it all before, even years ago, even if it could have been decades ago. And I want to say something else. I said to this young, this young uh, a grandmother brought her little granddaughter up to me yesterday. And they came and wanted me to pray for them. The little kid was beaming. And there's a nine-year-old girl. What was her name? Precious was her name. Precious, and her, ma, her grandma's name is Alice. And she's telling me she's struggling with the ministry. I said, I know, it's hard. You know, well, what's easy anyway? I just kind of said, I'll pray for you. But the key was, this kid was beaming. I want to be a prophet. I want to be a prophet. I said, well, first of all, and there was a great bishop there standing with me. So he listened a little bit what I was saying. I said, first of all, Jesus had to have called you into that office. What we call the fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He had to have called you. You can't elect yourself for that. But you can prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14, we all can prophesy. The, there's the ascension, ascension, A-S-C-E-N-S-I-O-N, gifts. 
Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edification of the body of Christ, that we all become, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, that we all come in the stature of the fullness of Christ to become like a perfect man in grown stature, that we no longer be like children, verse 13 and 14, tossed to and fro, tossed to and fro in every wind of doctrine. In other words, in other words nobody can persuade you otherwise once you've been persuaded by God. And the purpose of the fivefold ministry, what we call the ascension gifts of Jesus Christ, he gave the ordination for those gifts. You cannot elect yourself to that. But the Bible does say in Timothy somewhere, if you, if you desire the office of a bishop, you, you, you desire a good work. I heard an old man who's 77 years old. I just met him, a great old apostle bishop. He said when he was younger, he, saw, he read that scripture and it really touched him. He said, I desire this work. I thought, you're inspiring me because people have prophesied over me this office of the bishop coming. I said, oh. But I never felt like I desired it, like I thought I, I just have to have it. I want it for the title or the stature. Or the, I, never, I never had that feeling about it. But when he said it, a holy man of God, an old man of God who's been around a long time, he spoke about it with the most purity I've ever heard anybody speak. He was sitting at the table, and the host was in his own office. Turns out, I, can, I could say some things I want. I'll refrain from speaking on this. But, but I got to sit with this man of God, me and him. And there was another pastor there who was speaking in the conference also another day, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was now. But I was, him and I were focused together. And the switch came on. I began to pray. I just felt this, I feel this click in the spirit. I say, let's pray. I don't care if people are eating, people are what. I interrupt the whole program, stop everything. We're going to pray right now because the Holy Ghost just fell right here. He just stepped in here and told me to pray. I began to speak. He was telling me about his vision for his next phase of his life, the, the, the last years of his life. He's 77 now. He wants to go build a church in another uh, part of the country where the weather's really good and it's away from the city and all that. He's going to build a church there. And he talked about a two-year plan of succession to give this one and then go over there. I said, you know what? It'll happen quicker. The Holy Ghost said, it'll happen quicker than two years. In fact, God says, I'm already working on it. The man began to weep. The power of God fell at the table. He was reaching in all his pockets. I thought, what's he reaching for? Is he reaching for an offering to give me? That would be, that would be honorable. <laughs> I have a, a great message called The Importance of Honor. You need to honor the grace. One of the ways to honor the grace is with money. Did you know that? You can honor me as God's servant by giving offerings. You can honor God by paying him his tithe, but you can bless the ministry and the anointing and show honor, which will come back to you as a harvest by sowing financial seeds into the anointing. I pray everyone will do it. The information will be on the screen. In fact, we can put it right now. Uh, let's make it offering time for a minute, and then we'll just move on from here. i got to go uh, in five minutes. But uh, the Lord is serious about this. I heard something else in the Spirit. We could say we truly belong to God, but do we wholly belong to God? H W H O L L Y. Fully. Holy. Holy is H-O-L-Y. That's, a, that's one word. And holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, meaning fully, entire, entirely, I can say. Myself, I'm completely sold out to the vision. It's all I do seven days a week. It's what I do morning, noon, and night, and all through the night. 24 hours a day, this thing is on in me. Someone says, is that an imbalance of life? Not, not on your life. I have so much more to get done that I haven't even done already. Let me tell you what God will judge you for. Not what people around, people around you, whatever, that, that what you didn't get done. Listen to me. Visionary leadership. I'm speaking as a visionary and as a leader here. And I'm telling people, I'm telling everybody this. Listen, l l listen to God's servant here. The things that you were supposed to do that you didn't get done, the Lord will ask you about it later. That scares me. Imbalance of what? I regret every drop of time, minutes, hours, and seconds that I've lost along the way that were useless in God's economy of things, in God's kingdom. 
and everybody has had times they've they've wasted time they've lost time they were in a place of not enough direction maybe they were in the wrong place i remember one place i lived in this beautiful place beautiful house uh, palm trees everywhere, sunshine, tropical paradise, and man, I was bored. It wasn't the right place. It was okay for a while. It was acceptable. Some good things were happening there, but I, 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 I was not called ultimately to be there because I, really, I, I was always traveling to preach somewhere else. I didn't have any direction to raise up any work. And I, and I had some investments I wanted to do. I wanted people to help me. Nobody helped me correctly. It was just a loss. But I was doing so well, naturally speaking, you know. And I look back at that and I thought, everything seemed so good, so perfect, but it was empty a bit. So there's some time that I lost there. I wish I had been... And then God takes me to other places and kaboom, revival blows the whole place up, the Holy Ghost. So you want to make sure, and I tell you this to give you direction, you want to be where God has assigned you. That's where you'll flourish. You want to work very hard, day and night, morning, uh, noon, afternoon, evening, nighttime, all through the night. Sleep a bit when you can. <clears throat> and leads me to my, my verse of the day here. I found this by the Holy Ghost. So Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 11. Let's read it quickly because I got, I got, to, I got to get it. Verse, uh, sorry, verse uh, uh, 11, yes. I said it right. 711, I like the number. Song of Solomon, 711. Page 830. Can I read this number right? Eight thirty-nine in my New King James Bible, right here. Page eight thirty-nine, Song of Solomon from Solomon himself, chapter seven, verse eleven. It says, "This is the Lord talking." Come, my beloved. Or maybe Solomon was talking to someone, but I see this as from the Lord. Look at the language; how it is. It's so sweet and heavenly. Come, my beloved. I said, come, and the birds land on the balcony. You can hear them now. I didn't ask for you to come. Okay, don't worry. One's knocking on the window. Very funny. I said, come, and the birds come. They just flew like here like this second, because you could hear them now. You didn't hear them before. It's kind of supernatural. Come, my beloved, let us go forth in the, to the field. What is that? Your, your place of operation, your work. Let us lodge in the villages, meaning get out there and move into other places. I love this. Let us get up early to the vineyards and get out to the vineyards. Wow. <laughs> let us see if the vine has budded. Let Let's examine our work. You know, the scripture says, take count the cost, look at your work, see if you can do it, all this thing. Take assessments, look at it. In the New Testament, Jesus even said that. Let's see whether the vine has budded, symbolic of production. Let's see if the grape blossoms are open and the pomegranates are in bloom. Look at all the things that are growing. How are they growing? There I will give you my love. Really? Okay, this is kind of a love story from Solomon, but I, I look at it from direct from the Lord. There I'll give you my love. And the mandrakes give off a certain fragrance. And at our gates are pleasant fruits. Yes. And all manner of them, new and old, which I have laid up for you, my beloved. This is like a whole house, a whole fields, vineyards, beautiful, sweet fragrances, wonderful fruits, all kinds of operations. Let's see how they're looking. Get up early and go out there. Get out to the field. Come, my beloved, let's get out to the field. Another principle I want to say next is focus 
is simply choosing a master for your mind. I wrote a book on that, the, just the focus factor. It's sold out. It's out of print. Uh, we're going to reprint. I'm going to exp- do an expanded edition of this and get this out again. Of course, you can also get my book right now, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. And I have several other books that I've done, Success Strategies, some prophecies for the nation of Kenya, a, a book on the office of the prophet, very powerful. The Laws of Success, which is going to an expanded edition, uh, and the benefits of excellence. These three I have on, I have on digital. Uh, for my partners, you can get these. I can send them to you. Prophetic Keys of Successful Living, available in digital format. You can take it to a printer, print your own copy. If you're a, a, a generous partner of the ministry, Someone says, how much would it be to buy it? I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. I like people to sow a seed. Sow a generous seed way beyond some cheap book price, like a, some shillings, some small few dollars. Put, invest something in the ministry. That's a, it's a real good seed, okay? And again, the information will be on the screen. And I could get these to you as my gift. The laws of success, the benefits of excellence, and prophetic keys to, to successful living. I got to go. I trust I've covered this. I'll make some more notes for the last chapter of this in the book. But you you want to follow God as your mentor. You want to follow your vision that he's given you. And you need a role model to take you there. You need to work hard. You need to be diligent. The diligent hand makes rich. The slack hand makes the want. And the Bible says also in Proverbs, see a man diligent in his business or a woman, person diligent in their business, they'll stand before great people, even kings, not before mere commoners. And God does want to make people extra, extraordinarily successful. And I pray that will become you and your life in Jesus' name. Visionary leadership. Powerful. The, the other four volumes of this will, are on the YouTube channel. Uh, let's put that on the screen right now. YouTube.com forward sign at DR, Dr. Thomas Manton. That's the page. If you have that URL link, click, you know, type it out for yourself, click it. It becomes a hyperlink. It takes you right to the page, and you'll be able to see those messages there. All this week, we're going to be doing live, 1 p.m. every day. I'd like to do an evening one from maybe 8 p.m. to 8.50 p.m., about 45, 50 minutes in the 8 o'clock hour p.m. uh, uh, East African time, E-A-T, 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 East African time. And uh, yeah, one o'clock to two o'clock every day live, Monday to Friday. That is on already. We started this last week. It's going very well. Some of the messages are really getting traction. They're going viral. A lot of people are tuning and viewing. So know this, that Thomas Manton the Fourth is now live every lunch hour, and we're going to add the evening when we can. But definitely 1 p.m. sharp, East African time, or just a couple of minutes after, when we get it rolling, from 1 to 2, we're on with a live broadcast. Visionary Leadership 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be airing. Uh, And then probably we'll air this again as the last one in that hour since I've done this in less than an hour. God bless you. I got to go to the next event. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, his power, and his prosperity. And you rise up and become the leader God's ordained you to be. Don't sit around waiting. Get the direction from the Lord. I pray and I prophesy and declare that God will show you exactly, specifically, what it is he wants you to be doing. I told this nine-year-old girl yesterday who came with her grandmother brought her for prayer. She actually told the grandmother, just she did, the, the, the kid wanted me to pray for her. It wasn't a grandmother dragging her to me, let the prophet pray for you. Uh, and it was her. And I said, listen, how old are you? Nine. Wow. What's your name? Precious. I said, listen, Precious, right now. Start this year right now. Start now when you're nine. Don't wait till you're later. Start when you're young. I wish I had somebody telling me that in my early life. Do everything while you're young. Don't wait. Don't lose any time. Because the clock is always ticking. Next thing you know, there's an old song, an old rock song that says, then you see 10 years has got behind you and you don't know where to run now. You, where did the time go, you know? Classic line from a song. 
You got to be all in. I saw this movie, a James Bond movie, which I really thought was cool. Casino Royale, it's called, a James Bond movie. And there's a line in the movie when they're at the table uh, there, and they, they have this thing called All In, 40 million, $40 million on the table betting. I'm not recommending all that. But I like that line, all in, I'm all in. You have to ask yourself, am I all in in this thing called the gospel? Am I all in called this thing called the vision for my life? The Lord is the mentor and the boss. He will give us his direction to take on the vision that he's ordained and find a role model, somebody that's sold out, completely in it, they're consumed, they're wholly in it. They're not just truly gods, like they belong to God, they're born again, but someone that's wholly completely sold out to the vision that God's ordained. And then they're working accordingly. You can follow such a person. Somebody said there's many teachers, but few fathers. So this is the day when God's raising up fa fathers and the sons and daughters are coming from everywhere. Even to me, the Lord has spoken and the ministry is becoming expanded around the world in a network with many other leaders that we're helping to become very extraordinarily successful. And I pray also for you that you do the same in Jesus' name. Visionary leadership, it's been real. The Lord bless you, and we'll talk to you on the next broadcast. God bless you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly. God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering. You can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.